Today is February 11th, 2024, and in episode 122, I'd like to provide tips for narrowing down a research topic. Hello and welcome to ELT Cast, an educational podcast making English language teaching and learning more transparent. My name is Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.net. Before we get into today's topic, if you have any thoughts or experiences you would like to share, feel free to reach out to me at my X channel at B-N-L-E-E-Z. Okay, today I'd like to go over some, some tips, some ways that you might implement when you're trying to narrow down your topic when you're writing a research paper. And I'm specifically thinking about those of you who are writing a thesis paper and thesis seminar. One of the hardest things to do in any kind of paper, whether it's a longer literature review of, let's say, 2,500 words or maybe just a five-paragraph essay, is to try to narrow down your topic. So I want to try to go through a demonstration and my thought process in one way that you can approach this way of narrowing down your topic. And I think for uh, the purposes of this discussion, I'll, I'll use a, an overall question that's going to relate to my paper. I'll present a thesis statement and some possible research questions and then go into a little bit of detail about what tools I would use to narrow down this topic. So for this example, I'm going to use the following question that relates to my paper. How do English language teachers implement authentic and non-authentic materials to promote Lexical Grammar Understandings. Now, my working thesis based on this one central question might be to help English language learners, English language teachers can implement authentic and non-authentic materials to promote lexical grammar understandings among students by, number one, using current events, number two, using topics that interest the students, and number three, having students work in pairs. Now, these last three ways at the end, using current events, using topics of interest, and having students work in pairs, I'm still in in the stage of brainstorming and trying to come up with possible articles to support these three ways and also that relate to implementing authentic and non-authentic materials. So at this stage of the game here, I'm still exploring the research. And I don't know, perhaps at this point, whether or not I can find articles. Let's say that you're in a situation and you have this working thesis statement, a thesis statement that you're, you're considering, and you're not able to find articles. So let's continue on looking at some possible research questions. Everything is a, our potential at this point. Everything is a possibility at this point in terms of the research questions the thesis statement, and even the overall question, because maybe I have not either found the articles yet or I haven't even begun really the search process. So the research questions that might align with this working thesis statement might be, number one, how do teachers engage students' attention through authentic and non-authentic materials? Number two, how are authentic and non-authentic materials implemented in the classroom? Now, I want to come back to the research questions because I think we need to follow a few more steps in trying to narrow down a topic before we get too serious about the research topic or the research questions as they are presented here. One of the first things I would try to do when I look for articles based on this working thesis statement is, of course, look for articles that relate to authentic and non-authentic materials. Now, I'm going to use the word materials loosely here in the sense that I'm going to be open when I read these articles to also consider technologies, technologies as a type of material. Maybe I haven't decided on exactly which type of materials I want to use. Maybe I have a preference at the beginning of the search process of one or the other. Maybe I have a preference for technology. Maybe I have a preference for board games, but 
when I'm reach when I'm looking and looking for articles, I'm really keeping an open mind because maybe I don't know yet what what's out there. Maybe I don't know there are many more articles on technological materials than there are, let's say, board games, as an example. So when I start to search for articles, I I'm trying to come up with some possible key terms, keywords that I can use to do what's called a bullying search. That is, combine these search terms to try to filter out certain results, search results that are more appropriate to what I'm trying to find. So what I would try to do is I would start to think of grouping articles into categories. When I find articles based on using search terms like authentic materials, authentic, non-authentic materials, I might also include authentic learning and non-authentic learning. And in my working thesis, I also mentioned lexical grammar. So I'm looking for anything related to vocabulary, lexicon, lexical. These are all possible search terms that I might find. Uh, if I have an interest in the English language classroom, I'm going to use that as a search term. I might open it up and include any addition, learning in any kind of additional language, maybe learning Spanish, learning Japanese. Maybe there are more articles on learning other languages that relate to authentic or non-authentic materials. So I'm considering, although I'm, I have a particular interest in English language teaching, and maybe that's what I'm going to research myself, I'm going to be open to, for the literature, I'm going to be open to research studies that perhaps also include learning a different language other than English. In this example, I'm using the search term current events because maybe I want to think about how to implement a certain type of, let's say, input, comprehensible input, let's say a video, news broadcasts, maybe sport interviews if I have an interest in sports. But I'm trying to look for articles that fall under some kind of category that relate to current events. Maybe it's political, entertainment, sports, etc. That's one approach, is trying to find this, the combination of search terms when I, when I open up my search. Now, I'm going to open up my browser here. And I think uh, a couple of ways you can go about searching. There are many ways. One is, of course, Google Scholar and another Semantic Scholar, both of which allow you to create a profile and allow you to save your searches and even build uh, automatic search queries that uh, allow these platforms to continue to, to look for certain research on a particular set of keywords. I also have a page called EdTech Search Strategies. And if you scroll down just below where I explain how to use a bullying search, how to use DuckDuckGo bangs, even how to use the uh, digital library, those of you who are attending the, the university. I have additional tools that might help you that incorporate AI or generative AI. So I list those here, and I also list a method that you might explore. I'm not going to get into all of these, and these are just this is just a tip of the iceberg in terms of the tools that you might use to find some of these articles. But what I want to talk about here today is uh, more of a way to think about bringing together certain keywords and categorizing your articles as you find those articles in a way that helps you narrow down your topic. So here I have an example. Uh, let's say that I find some articles on authentic materials, lexicon, and current events. I would put those articles into a a, a uh, maybe a folder if I'm doing all of this online. Um, and then maybe I find some additional articles on non-authentic lexica lexical or vocabulary, current events. Now notice I'm using the word current events, but when you start to find literature, you might find maybe a lot of articles on using, just use the video. And maybe the concept of current events, maybe it's just a wider range of um, types of videos that could be used. 
So you could use another approach. If I'm going through this process and let's say that I, I find a lot of videos or a lot of articles based on the use of video to promote lexical grammar and non-authentic materials, then I might use, I might change my three ways to include three different ways to use video to promote lexical grammar, either in an authentic or non-authentic way. This working thesis, the key word here is working. So that means you can change it at any time as you're narrowing down your search. Maybe you have a lot of articles on only authentic material, the use of video to promote grammar only. So now you have what you need and you can find three different ways. Let's say the use of video to help with listening comprehension. Maybe use of video to talk about social cultural aspects of the video itself, right? Where culture can also be brought in to uh, the classroom. Maybe the use of video is used as an assessment tool and the use of video is more directed towards their own assessment. So there are many ways that just the use of video itself can be useful. And so the trick here is to find articles and, and to be open as you're exploring to find these additional key terms. Let, let the search process and when you find these different articles guide you into certain areas. So let me provide some, some examples. I personally like semantic scholars. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a bullying search. And I'm going to start with authentic. And I'm going to use an ELT. And I'm going to use the operator and. So I'll, let me change this. So this is a bullying search where you're using operators, in this case, the operator and. So I'm trying to find articles that ha that contain authentic materials, and I'll use quotation marks to indicate the phrase. And then we have the ELT. And let's say I want to just lo limit it to grammar, and I'll just put video and see what I get. So I have here 80 results. Now, of course, I'm not going to have access to all of these documents. You'll notice some have the PDF that are available, but at least it gives me a start. So TED as trends in English to debate. So right there, just even before I open up this article, this article, before I even read the short description that is below, I already have an idea of other possible keywords or topics that I might pursue in my own research. I might just focus on TED, the use of TED videos. And in this one article, it mentions debate. So I already have an idea, okay, debate, that might be a way. How to form good debates, how to use debates in the English language classroom through the use of video. It's an authentic material and now I'm starting to put together some ideas. I'm starting to get some ideas. And I bet I could find, if I wanted to search debates, if that's something that was of interest to me, relevant to my, the problem that I want to research, I could expand my search and include now debates. Because maybe I didn't think about debate before, but now that's a pretty good idea. And there's probably a lot of research on how to to do a good debate. Now, whether that's specifically related to videos, right? We have to combine our ideas when we find research to make the connections between different key terms and ideas and concepts and theories. So in this case, I probably can find some stuff on debate. I can find articles and research on debate. And maybe I want to pursue that, that, that area. So here I could go into the research and, and read the article and start to determine whether or not I want to use this. Now, 
at this point, I'm still looking for articles, so I'm not going to read the whole article. And, and even I may not even read the abstract. I might just say, okay, that, I didn't think about this. This is a pretty good idea. I'm going to save this article and read it later. What else we have here? Um, there's something on business English. So maybe being a business English is of interest and you want to pursue that. But you're, there are a lot of different topics here that are pre present in just looking at the title of each of these articles. And a lot of times, simply just looking at the titles of the article you can start to group or categorize certain types of articles. And that's what you're looking for. I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, stress too much. If I, if I don't find something about current events in, as, as a phrase, current event, then I'm going to change it right away. I'm going to open it up and look at for something else. And notice in this example, I just have... I'm just using authentic materials. I haven't even explored non-authentic, and maybe I don't want to because maybe there's enough information out there that I only focus on authentic material. Same way with lexical and grammar. Let's do the same exercise now with, instead of grammar, we'll say lexicon and vocabulary and lexical grammar. Okay, so I'm going to modify this slightly. Again, I'm using a Boolean search using different operators. Let's see what kind of search I get. Now it's pretty limited. So when you're narrowing down your topic and you get a result like this where it's very limited, there's only, there are only two articles, then we need to back up and either reduce the number of key terms in our Boolean search or change from a, a more specific term to a broader or more general term. So in this case, I'm simply going to just include vocabulary. And maybe this will yield more results. So I do another search, and indeed, it does. Now I have 110 results. Of course, I don't have access to every single article, but there are many. Daily routines. Okay, maybe there's something there. Here's another TED Trends English debate. So maybe, again, the same article pops up again, and I want to research this. If we want to look for just articles within the last five years, I would always recommend this filter because I think I would always start there to try to search for the most recent articles. In this case, it reduced the results from 110 to 42, but I still have some to work with. Learning slang. There you go. Maybe, maybe there's something there that you want to use for learning slang. And you can find a lot of other articles. And maybe I decide, you know, instead of current events or instead of using topics of interest, or instead of working in pairs, I add using slang or learning slang or idiomatic expressions or phrasal verbs, which are also idiomatic. So I'm brainstorming. I'm thinking outside of the box here. I'm, I'm starting with a thesis statement, a working thesis statement, but as I'm reading all of these articles, I'm trying to come up with ideas. And each time I come up with an idea, like learning slang, a debate, TED videos. I use those search terms to see what I can come up with. And again, the idea is to gather these articles as you go through this process, this exploratory process. You'll start to put articles together into categories. And that's what I would recommend. So once you put these articles into certain categories, think of those categories as potential sections or, or subsections of your literature review. And as you put those into different subsections, sections and subsections, and you're trying to narrow down your topic, then 
you're going to want to come back and revisit these research questions. So I'm going to give, I'm going to provide an example here. I'm going to modify slightly this example. Let's say that through my research, through my exploration of looking for articles for my topic, I've decided to only focus on authentic material to promote. And I, let's say I just want to focus on grammar. I decide here that one of my subtopics, let's see here, implement authentic materials. I add here learning slang. So learning slang, and maybe I have another topic related to forming debates. And, you know, through my process, maybe I, I found another possible way to use authentic materials and promote grammar. Now, remember, too, if I decide, you know, maybe I don't want to focus on physical material versus digital material. Maybe I just want to say use of videos. I could say, okay, I'm not even going to use authentic materials. Or I could say authentic materials through the use of video, if I want to be that specific, or I could just simply say English language teachers can implement video to promote grammar understandings by learning slang, by forming debates, and perhaps another key term. Now, in this case, the different ways, I have three here, but I might decide just to include two ways. Maybe I I find four different ways. Anywhere from two to four different key points listed at the end of your thesis statement, I think, is a, is a good number to consider. Now, once you have your ideas here, let's say I just want to form two points, just for our example. Now, I'm going to need to come up with at least two research questions. Maybe I could come up with two later, but... For now, I'll say something like, how do English language teachers, and I'm going to try to extract our research questions or base our research questions directly with um, the thesis statement. So I could say, how do English language teachers implement video? And I could, I could expand. I could say exactly authentic materials through the use of video by learning slang when forming conversations with classmates, something like this. Now, the only thing I've added to this research question is uh, when forming conversations in classmates. So notice I've added a slight, slightly more context to my research questions, and this would be something that I'm going to be looking for not only supporting in my literature review, but something that I'm going to be gathering data for when I start my own study. But, you know, maybe I want to limit this, this research to when, I'm, when students are having conversations with themselves. Now, second question would be something similar. How do English language teachers implement... Authentic materials through the use of video to promote, and I think I forgot to promote grammar, didn't I? So how do teachers implement video to promote grammar by learning slang when forming questions with classrooms? Something like this. This is probably not uh, the best formed question here, but... Hopefully you see the idea. What I'm trying to do is implement keywords and extract them from the, the working thesis statement and include those here in the, in the research questions. So here, how do English language teachers implement authentic materials through the use of video to promote grammar through, through creating debates on current issues? Again, I'm just adding a little bit of context after the keywords that I am using from the thesis statement 
just to make it a little bit more uh, specific. Most debates are built around current issues anyway, so um, I'm just uh, adding a little bit of context there at the end of this question. But more or less, this is the idea, trying to bring in key terms from the thesis statement, bring it in, into your research questions. But notice the, the process here. I first need to go through and read these articles. I, not, I need to be in a place where I've categor, categorized enough of the articles that allow me to now think in terms, in this case, two different ways, two different sections, so that when I am writing these research questions, I already know that I have articles that support learning slang, supporting uh, grammar, uh, forming, uh, formulating debates or creating debate situations with students in a way that allow them to practice the grammar that they learned. And so this is one way that you can go about doing this. Now, I have a section down below where I state forming categories for groups of articles. And what I mean by some of these examples here is what I've already mentioned. Like when you are doing your search and you're looking for different keywords, some keywords are going to be better than others. So it's just a matter of experimenting with the different keywords until you get the right mix before, you know, until you get the right combination of keywords that allows you to create a working thesis statement or eventually a permanent thesis statement with research questions that relate. What we want to try to do is make sure that our literature review that we're developing now ends up aligning with the actual research that we do. We don't want to mention uh, anything in our literature review. If we say something about learning slang and we, don't, we aren't looking for situations where students are practicing or learning slang, then we're going to have an alignment problem. So it's not too early to be reminding ourselves who's going to be our participants, what kind of teachers and classroom situations, perhaps what kind of schools will I be needing to help me answer my research questions? And again, those research questions should also align with the literature that we're developing at this point. So I've included here in the show notes, I've included here some additional pages that you can refer to to help you through your search process, some different websites, some use AI. These might be useful for you to try to find different uh, articles. I highly recommend that you go through this, uh, this page, the show notes here, to help guide you in this process. And, of course, as we begin week three of our research process, uh, now's the time to be contacting me and, and scheduling time with me if you are still having some issues finding articles. At this point, as we finish week two, all of us should now be at a point where we have most, if not all, of the research articles that we need to support our entire literature review. So I think we'll stop there. I hope you find this useful. If uh, you have any other suggestions, feel free to reach out to me. Those who are not taking me for a class, feel free to reach out to me in my X channel at BNLEEZ if you have any additional thoughts, comments, opinions on today's topic. And uh, I think we'll stop there for today. This has been ELT Cast, an educational podcast making English language teaching and learning more transparent. Thanks for listening.